You're listening to the Hurdy Gurdy Travel Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Vakula, here to help you travel the world and next to no cost through credit card points, miles, benefits, and rewards. Make money, save money, and take advantage of great deals. Visit my website at hurdygurdytravel.com to contact me, find me on social media, and support the show with donations and use of referral links. More information at the end of the show. Thanks for joining me for episode 33, U.S. Bank Altitude Go Card, a second take. I'll once again review the U.S. Bank Altitude Go Card, suggesting many better alternatives. Days ago, U.S. Bank released the Altitude Go credit card, following rumors from March of 2020. Altitude Go currently offers a sign-up bonus of $200, or 20,000 points. Points, when redeemed for travel or cashback, are worth one cent per point, sadly not 1.5 cents per point offered by the Altitude Reserve Card. The Altitude Go card has no annual fee, four times points on takeout, food delivery, and dining, two times points at grocery stores, grocery delivery, streaming services, and gas stations, and one times points on all other purchases. Altitude Go also features a 0% APR for purchases and balance transfers during the first 12 billing cycles, and a $15 yearly statement credit for select streaming services, including Netflix and Spotify. How much value might this card provide in year one? I estimate a total value of around $250 and even less for people who have other credit cards. Year two earnings drop significantly. Sign-up bonus valued at $200 is very low compared to other cards, especially for people relatively new to credit card rewards. Consider cards from Barclays, like JetBlue, JetBlue Business, or Aviator. Chase. Chase Sapphire Preferred, Chase Inc. Cards, and World of Hyatt. American Express, many great options, and Capital One, Venture, Spark Cash, or Spark Miles. Think about the long game. Aim for valuable cards early in your credit card quest, rather than later being locked out due to too many recent opened accounts. Chase, Capital One, and Barclays, for example, frown on extensive credit histories. Chase, in most cases, will deny people who have five or more accounts showing on their personal credit reports in the last 24 months. Barclays sometimes enforces a 624 rule, similar to Chase's 524 rule, and Capital One is known to decline people who have several credit cards. Capital One pulls three credit bureaus and their business cards appear on personal credit reports, so the acquisition of their cards and other issuers' cards may become more complicated. The Venture card, to name just one Capital One card, is decent with a 50,000 point sign-up bonus, two times earning on all purchases, and other perks. Venture will likely outperform Altitude Go, especially for frequent travelers. More advanced credit card users and semi-frequent travelers may also highly value the Visa Infinite UBS Business Card, with a limited time offer expiring July 31st, which easily offers more than $1,000 in value and has no annual fee in its first year. Two $350 airline incidental credits, a 25,000-point sign-up bonus, bonus categories, and loads of perks, including travel protections. The card also performs well in its second year, with a retention bonus of 25,000 more points and another airline incidental credit. Those who apply before July 31st will have $350 airline incidental credits for 2020 and 2021, without paying an annual fee. Those who wish to keep the card for card member year 2 will pay an annual fee, but have another $350 credit in 2022. For a deeper dive into the UBS business card, listen to podcast episode 25. The value of Altitude Go declines for those who have multiple credit cards. 4% back on dining, for example, is only 2% more than cards earning 2% cash back everywhere, like American Express, Blue Business Cash, or City Double Cash, preferably acquired through a product change from cards like the powerful City Premier. Points earning cards like Chase Sapphire Preferred provide 2 times points on dining, or 2% cash back if cashing out ultimate reward points. So thinking of the card as 4% back isn't the full story when it's only 2% more than other cards. American Express's Personal Gold card also offers 4 times points on dining, or 5% back, if points are redeemed for cash through the American Express Charles Schwab Platinum card. Charles Schwab Platinum is great for those who want cash back through American Express, at 1.25 cents per point, rather than redeeming points for statement credits at only 6 tenths of a cent per point. The Personal Gold card is a great keeper card for many who occasionally travel, and can use the card's dining credits and airline incidental credits. An annual fee of $250 becomes $30 and will likely be offset by spending at grocery stores and dining, which gives four times points. U.S. Bank is also often strict with credit card approvals, declining those who have multiple hard inquiries and or open credit cards in the past six months. 
Many who want the Altsu Go card may have to wait several months of no inquiries or opened accounts, which hardly seems worthwhile. Instead, U.S. bank fans can wait for the upcoming Altitude Connect card, which should have a sign-up bonus of 50,000 points, no annual fee for the first year, some bonus categories, and a possibility of downgrading to Altitude Go in year two. For more on the Altitude Connect card, listen to podcast episode 17. Some may see the Altitude Go card as a good way to establish a relationship with U.S. Bank to qualify for the high-value Altitude Reserve card. But as I explained in podcast episode 30, one can open a self-directed investment account with U.S. Bank without taking a hard inquiry and then having to wait several months before applying for Altitude Reserve. U.S. Bank has no account minimums like some other brokerage accounts, and although they charge a small fee for transactions, it's well worth avoiding having to wait six additional months, taking a hard inquiry, and then incurring additional opportunity costs. Advanced or intermediate credit card users, on my evaluation, should pass on the Altitude Go card because many better options exist, even for those who forsake travel for cash back. There's significant opportunity cost, especially for those who will have to wait several months of no new opened accounts. Those who don't want multiple credit cards, haven't opened accounts in the last six months, don't want to travel, and want a very easy card to use, may still want the Altitude Go card. Those with many cards, veterans of the credit card reward space focused on cashback, may also want the Altitude Go card if they have few inquiries in the past six months. The 0% intro APR can be attractive, but carrying a high balance even with 0% APR will negatively impact credit card utilization and likely disqualify people from getting other credit cards. In most cases, utilizing 0% APR on various business cards is a better approach since your personal credit card utilization won't be impacted. This podcast isn't about small returns from credit cards. It's about inspiring people to get high returns from credit cards rather than settling for small sign-up bonuses of $200, focusing on minimal gains from bonus categories, and completely avoiding annual fees. Annual fee cards, like the American Express Gold Card and Chase Sapphire Preferred I mentioned earlier in this episode, are often great investments, providing far more overall value than Altitude Go, especially in year one. Simplicity and avoiding annual fees comes at significant cost. Low spenders who are overly focused on category gain, especially from cards with low sign-up bonuses, simply aren't optimizing rewards. Consider, one who spends even $400 in dining a month gains $192 from the 4% dining category, or only $96 more than a 2% everywhere card when only considering the dining category. Some may spend a very large amount on dining, especially those who cater work-related events, but most simply won't spend enough on dining to experience a high return. Those interested in cutting costs, especially during this time of shelter in place, can buy discounted gift cards for local restaurants. Grubhub and Uber Eats which will almost certainly be better than a 4% discount or 4% cash back, especially if they stack deals or utilize high category earning from other credit cards, buying gift cards at drug stores, office supply stores, or grocery stores, especially also earning grocery store reward points redeemable for food or gas discounts. Overall, I'm not impressed by the Altitude Go card, but I'm happy to work with you to suggest better options. Simply visit my website at hurdygurdytravel.com and complete the credit card questionnaire form for a personalized recommendation. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for more content. Visit my website at hurdygurdytravel.com where you can contact me, read episode transcripts, follow me on social media, and listen to past episodes. Support my work through Patreon, PayPal, the Cash App, and referral links by visiting the Donate tab on my website. Subscribe on YouTube at Hurdy Travel Podcast. Like my Hurdy Travel Podcast Facebook page, follow HG Travel Podcast on Twitter, and follow Justin Vakula on Instagram. I'll be live streaming from YouTube with business coach Cakeology on Tuesdays and Fridays at 9 p.m. Eastern as shelter and place time continues. We'll talk about all things money, business, and credit while answering questions from a live audience. Find announcements for upcoming streams and archives of past live streams on my website at hurdygurdytravel.com. Schedule a free 15-minute consultation with full-time business coach and YouTuber Cakeology who can help you formally establish your business, build business credit, and get premium business credit cards. When you select from various paid services after the free consultation, I will receive credit for referring you. Listen to Cakeology on episode 12 of my podcast. Visit my other podcast at stoicsolutionspodcast.com, where you can find practical wisdom for everyday life inspired by the ancient philosophers of Greece and Rome. Thanks to generous patrons and fans of this podcast who help support my work. Have a great day. 